Seches Bava Kama Daf Yod Tes contains a number of shilas about Tzreirois and other aspects of Regel. Towards the end of the Daf, we'll begin our next Mishnah, which discusses the Mazik of Shane. So first begins with the shayla asked by Ravashi, is there such a concept as Tzreirois, which is Chatsi Nezek because it's flying, combining with Karen to be a half of a half a Nezek, and therefore it's a quarter Nezek. So the Tzreirois means that the rock flew from the animal and hit something, so that's half Nezek because it's its Koyach. Could you say that if he did that on purpose with Kavan al Hazik, so it's Mashuna, that's, let's say he kick the rock in order to break something, so that would be half of the half Nezek, and therefore would be a quarter Nezek. Can you combine the two half Nezeks to a quarter? So the Gemara wants to say, you can prove from Rava's question that this is not a Shaila, because Rava asked, does Tereris become a Muad? And that means, does it become a Muad after three times of pain Nezek Shalim? Now, if it only paid a quarter the first three times, it wouldn't get to be a Muad after three times. It would only get to be half Nezek. So obviously, there is no quarter there's only half, and then Rav is asking if it goes to thirds. So the Gemara says, no, not necessarily. Rav could have been asking two questions. First of all, is it a quarter? And if it's a quarter, and if it's not a quarter, does it get to whole? Or if it's a quarter, does it get to half? He's asking the concept of mood for the Chati Nezek of Saras, does that exist? From a quarter to a half, or from a half to a whole, whichever it is. Either way, the Shaila works. Okay, now, what is the sock on this? The Gemara leaves it as a take the question remains. Now there is another question of Ashi asked, what about Koyach Koyach according to Samchas? Samchas doesn't hold of Tzreiris. Samchas holds that Tzreiris pays Nezek Shalim, not Chatzin Nezek. The question is, what if you have the Koyach of the Koyach? So the animal hits something which flies, then hits something else and causes that to fly. Is that Tzreiris Chatzin Nezek? Does Samchas agree to that? What's that question dependent on? What would be the reason that Samchas says that Chatzin Nezek, that there's no Chatzin Nezek Tzreiris? Because he doesn't hold of the Halach Mash Sinai at all, or he holds of the Halach Mash Sinai, but he just holds that it's referring to Kayach um, Kayachay, and therefore he would agree to it there. So that is the question. And again, the Gemara says, Take you the question stance. The Gemara now quotes the next line in the Mishnah and has a Hakir how to read it. So the line says, If it was kicking or the Ritzar is flying from under its feet and it breaks Kalim, it pay Chatin as The Gemara wants to know, Is this. The tzoros that are flying here are from the kicking, or it's talking about a separate case where it's flying without the kicking. Is it one case with two parts, or is it two separate cases completely? So you would read it as, and so depending on how you read it, would be what the reason for the chatzineze in the case of tzoros is. Is it because of Karen, or is it because of chatzinezek of tzoros? So the Gemara's first way of reading it is it says that it was kicking, and it kicked and it broke something, and that's Chazinezek because it's Karen. Or if it was Tzreiris flying normally, and that's Chazinezek because it's Tzreiris, and that's and these are two different reasons for Chazinezek, and this would be the Rabbanon who hold that it's Chazinezek Tzreiris, that Tzreiris is Chazinezek, or is this really Sumchas? And you read it like this it was kicking, or Tzreiris were flying. Both from the kick, meaning the kick was direct contact, or the kick caused Tzreiris to fly and break. And therefore, it's Chatzin Nezek because it's Karen and not because of the Regal. And this would be Sumchus' opinion to hold that something flying itself is not a reason to make it Chatzin Nezek. That's somewhere's question how to read this. Somewhere says, well, you could learn from the Seifa. The next case says, if it steps on a clean and broke it, and then a piece broke off of that clean and hit something else and broke that. So for the first clean, you pay Nezek Shalim. For the second clean, you pay Chatzin Nezek. So if it would be Sumchus, why should the second Kli pay Chati Nezek? Some because it doesn't hold of Chati Nezek. So obviously this would have to be their Abonon, and that's why there's Chati Nezek on that Kli. So when says, no, maybe that some because agrees to Koyach Koychoy, that Koyach Koychoy, the flying, the second strength, is really Chati uh, Nezek. So Mar says, but we just said that that's a question that Ravashi asked. Does some because agree to Koyach Koychoy being Chati Nezek or not? Why doesn't Ravashi resolve it from here? Um, if Ravashi still has his question, he obviously must not be able to prove from this Mishnah that this has to be Sumchas. So what, what's Rav Ashi asking? So the Gemara says no. Maybe really Rav Ashi is assuming that this entire Mishnah here is the Rabbanon. He's not agreeing that this would be Sumchas. Um, and therefore we could still ask the question, is it Sumchas or is it the 
Rabbanan, and Ravashi would be asking, it's the Rabbanan, Ravashi would be explaining our question that we just asked about how you read it, he's explaining it differently. He wants to know, are you reading it as it's all Chatzinezek because of Karen, and therefore it's only Chatzinezek, or it's Chatzinezek, Karen, combined with Chatzinezek Tzvaros, and therefore comes out to be a quarter of the Nezek. That's how Abai, that's how uh, Rav Ashi reads the question, but he's really in the Senate, it's the Rabbanan, and it's nothing to do with Tzvaros. Now, the Gemara leaves it as a take you again. The question remains, you don't have an answer. The Gemara has another Shaila related, and this one is asked by Abba Bar Momo to Rabbi Ami, so I'm sorry, Bechia Bar Abba. If the animal is walking in a place where in normal walking, rocks have to go flying, it's full of gravel, rocks don't go flying. However, it doesn't walk normally, it kicks and makes the rocks fly. So, does that kicking make it be uh, Karen, make it be Mashona? Because it's Kavanas Lahazik, or since it would fly anyway, whether it's kicking or not, therefore you don't pay attention to that, and it's not Kavanas Lahazik. And Afkamina would be, according to the opinion that you could have, Karen Tsreiris be quarter Nezek, so would you call this quarter Nezek? Because it's both Tsreiris and Karen, or would you say, no, the Karen aspect of it is not here, you don't view it as being Mashunas, since it would fly anyway. Again, the Gemara leaves it as Teku. The Gemara now asks if Chatzin Nezek Tzvaris has another halacha of Karen, since it's only half Nezek, and that is that Karen is Chayv in Rishas Harabim. Regal, which Tzvaris is usually a told of, Regal is Pater in Rishas Harabim. So the Gemara's question is, if you have Tzvaris happening in Rishas Harabim, the Gemara says that Rav Yirmiya asks Rav Zeri, you have Tzvaris in Rishas Harabim, it's walking in Rishas Harabim, and it uh, sprays rocks from its feet, and it causes a damage the assumption here is it means in Rishos Harabim. So do you say that it's like Karen because it's Chatzin Nezek and it's Chayv in Rishos Harabim? Because um, there's some manner of not Orche to it. Or do you say, no, this is a Tolda of Regal, just like it is normal walking, and therefore it is a Tolda of Regal, and it is Putter in Rishos Harabim. Now there is a Girsa here that it's talking about where it kicks, um, and the question is where it's kicking in Rishos Harabim. Uh, Rashi doesn't go with that Girsa. So anyway, so therefore, we're learning that the question is, is Chatzin Nezek Tzvaris Chayv in Rishos HaRabim? So the Gemara says that the answer, Rabbi Zeir answered, and he said, no, it's told of Regal, and it's Pater in Rishos HaRabim. So then he asked, what if it uh, is walking in Rishos HaRabim, and the rocks fly from its feet in Rishos HaRabim, but they then fly into Rishos HaYachid, into the Rishos HaNizik, and hit a clear there and break it there. So he said, it's not enough. If the Akira, if the the uprooting to set flight to the rocks happens in Rosh Harabim. It's Pater just like any regal is Pater in Rosh Harabim. So the Gemara asked the question. He asked, as a Bryson says, if it was walking in Rish, that if it was walking on the road and it sprayed rocks, whether it's Rosh Hashanah or it's Rosh Harabim, it's Chayef. So you see clearly Rosh Harabim is Chayef. So the Gemara first wants to say it's talking about where it was walking in Rosh Harabim and it sprayed and it hit in Rosh Harabim. And you see that it is in Rosh Harabim is Chayef like Karen is. Con- uh, contradicting Reb Zerah's first psaac. So the Gemara says Reb Zerah responded, he said, no, we're talking about where he's walking in Rosh Hashanah, and it sprayed and hit in Rosh Hashanah. So he said, but you said that that case is Pater also, so what does it help you? So he said, on that I was Chazer. Now the Gemara another question with a similar exchange. It says if it, the animal stepped on a kli, broke it, and a piece flew off and hit another kli and broke that one. So the first one you pay Nezek Shalem, that's regular Regel. On the last one you pay Chatzin Nezek, because that's Tzreiris. Now, we learned on that Abrais, that says that that's talking about if it was in Rosh Hanizik, where you're high for, for Regal. If it would be in Rosh Hashanah, the first one, you putter. Again, the logic here is because it's Regal, which is putter in Rosh And on the second one, you're high. So the Mara says the second was where? Most logically, he was walking in Rosh Hashanah, and the second cleave was broken in Rosh Hashanah also. Proof that Karen is high, that Chatzin Hazak Cyrus is high, is. Chayev in Rishos Harabim. That's why the second kli is he's Chayev for. So Mar says no. It was walking Rishos Harabim and it hit it and broke Rishos Yachid. Again, you said that that can't be. You're not Chayev for that because the original flying began in Rishos Harabim. So you said again. I was Chayev from that. I changed my mind. Gemara has a third raya again, similar structure, but this time is an additional answer. This proof comes from a member of Yechanan, who says when he's talking about chatzin nezek, paying half nezek, which the Gemara assumes at this point refers to tzvaris, there's no difference between rishos rabim and rishos yachid. So Gemara says that means that even if it was 
Mata Zifid was walking in Rishas Harabim and it made stones fly and it caused the Hezek in Rishas Harabim. There's no Chilik and you're high for that as well. So Mara says, no, that's not what it's referring to. It's referring to where it was walking in Rishas Harabim and it hit something in Rishas HaYachid. But it says no difference between Rishas Harabim and Rishas HaYachid. It's talking about the place where it's walking. But to land, it has to land in Rishas HaYachid. So the Gemara says, what does that help? You pass again before that he put for that case also. So the Gemara says again, he said, I changed my mind. Another answer is that Rabbi Yechon wasn't talking about Chatzin and Tzaris at all. He was talking about Karen. He was saying a Karen is no difference for Shosar Rabbim or Shosar Yachid, but Tzaris is told of Regal, there is a difference. Gemara now records another seemingly unrelated child. Gemara says, Rabbi Yehuda and Asiya and Rabbi were sitting on the porch of Rabbi Yehuda, and from between them came the question, what if the animal wagged its tail and it broke something that way? What is the halach of that? Is that Karen or is that Regel? Is that something normal or not? So the answer was uh, given, yeah, that's Orche, what's he supposed to do? But it's supposed to hold the animal's tail to prevent it from wagging. It's a very common thing, and therefore it uh, counts as Regel. So Mary says, if that's true, so then Karen, also, if it hits someone with his horn, what, what's he supposed to do? Hold on to the Karen? So what do you mean? Hold on to the Karen. Karen is not a normal thing. Karen, because it is Karen. It's not something that happens often. This is normal. It happens all the time. You can't blame the guy for that happening. So Gemara says, if it's so normal, so what was the question? What was he even asking in the first place? Gemara answers, we're referring to the word wagged pretty hard. More than normal wagging. Does that still count as normal because it's the same action? Or does that count as something else that counts as a special Karen and it's not? Similarly, the Gemara asked another question. If Ina asked, what if it uh, flapped around, but this time not its tail, but flapped around its male organ and caused a hezek? So the Gemara assumes that it did that out of some kind of drive, which the Gemara refers to as a Yetzer. So the Gemara says that's very similar to Karen. Karen is driven by its Yetzer. And this is also it's driven by its Yetzer. So therefore, do you say that they are both Yetzer driven and therefore it's Karen? Or do you say that this is not Kavanasi uh, Lahazik? This is not trying to destroy or to damage anything. Perhaps there's some Hanal in it. And therefore, it should not be Karen. So Gemara says, it take you, it remains a Shaila. Gemara now moves to the next line in our Mishnah, where we had seen that if a chicken has an object tied to its foot and it causes Hezek, then you have to pay half Nezek for that. So Gemara asks, the Gemara says, Rav Huna says that we're referring to where it got tied on by itself. However, if a person tied this object to the foot of the ch- chicken, that person would be responsible and it would be Nezek Shalim. Why? Because he created a hazard. He created something in the way which is going to cause people to slip, trip, fall on it. That's a bar, and he paid Nezek Shalim for the bar. So it wouldn't be Chati Nezek, it would be Nezek Shalim. So Mar says, okay, let's talk about where it gets tied on by itself. So the Mishnah says that you pay half Nezek. Who's paying half Nezek? If the owner of the object is paying half Nezek for allowing it to get it tied onto the chicken's foot, so what's the case? If he hit it, he stored it properly. So what did he do wrong? There's nothing he could have done about that. He shouldn't have to pay anything. If he left it out haphazardly, so then it was not stored properly, then is it Poshaya, he should pay Nezek Shalim. So... Uh, why is it half Nezek again? So it couldn't be him. So when, then what are we referring to? We must refer to the owner of the chicken who got this thing tied to his foot. So again, why does he have to pay? Because his chicken made a bar. That's what really happened. His chicken picked up a bar and turned it into something. Now, you don't pay for an animal making a bar. The terror says, Kiyiftach Ishbar, Veloy Sharbar. So maybe tell me that's why he doesn't pay half Nezek, because he says, because he didn't make it into a bar, but there's no other Mechaev here. If it's not if it's not the bar, so it's not Nezek Shalem, it shouldn't be Chatzin Nezek either. What other Mechaev is there? So the Gemara says, so it must be referring to where it flew, where it flew off the foot of the animal and it caused Hezek. Yeah, but it makes no difference how it got to tie it on there. Even if a person had tied it on, it's not a bar that he created. Um, so the only thing that you have is that it's the terrorist, it flew, and it's half Nezek like, because of the terrorist, because of the flight that happened. Now, Rav Huna, who had said that it has to be tied on, was talking about a different case. He was referring to where the object was Hefker. And Rav Huna said that if it got tied on by itself, so the owner of the chicken is putter. Again, the owner of the object is for Shon Achayv because there is no such owner. The owner of the, if it gets tied on by itself, the owner of the chicken is putter because again, 
his animal made the bar is not chayiv for that. And if it's found by a person, then that person is chayiv. Mar asks, what's he chayiv for? So Mar explains, it's bar hamaskalgal. He set up a bar, something for people to trip on. Even though it moves around, he made it. He made the hazard, and therefore he's chayiv for that. We now begin our next mission, which introduces the topic of shane, when an animal eats and destroys by eating. I'm going to have a pretty cryptic mission. The Gemara will have to explain it again, line by line. So the mission says, what is the mazik of shane? An animal is a mu'a to eat anything which is normal for it to eat. So eating normal food, that's shane, and the halacha there is that it's nezik shalim, and that it is potter in rishos Abim. And again, the mission gives an example, if it eats fruits, vegetables. However, if it eats blankets, or clothing or objects, then it's mishuna, it's weird, and therefore it's considered to be destroying with intent to destroy, and it's chatzin nezek. And um, again, the Mishnah says that regular shame is only in Rishos HaYachid, not, it's only Rishos HaNizik, not in Rishos HaRabim. Now, if the animal has a hana from it, then you have to pay for that hana that it had. Uh, and you don't pay for the damage, you pay for the hana. The Gemara brings two examples of that. And we're going to have to explain, the Mishnah brings two examples of that. We're going to have to explain it in the Gemara. So how does Mishnah Lemis, how does it pay for the Hana that it had? So if it's from the uh, middle of the street square, you pay for the Hana. If it's from the side of the square, you pay for the Hezek. If it's from the doorway of the store, you pay for, for the Hana. If it's from inside the store, then you pay for the Hezek. The Gemara now begins, and the Gemara lists various types of food and what is normal for what type of animal to eat. So the Gemara says, Shane is eating normal foods. What is that? So an animal that enters the Chatzar of the Nizik and it eats normal foods, or drinks normal drinks, pays Nizik Shalem, or a Chaya, a wild animal that enters the Chatzar of the Nizik and it uh, kills a behemoth and eats the meat, pays Nizik Shalem. A cow who eats barley, which is food of the donkey or the the donkey that eats karshinin which is food of cows or a dog which licks up oil which is what a pig normally eats or a pig that eats meat which is what a dog normally eats so here you have animals eating things which aren't normal but they are possible they're things that animals eat when they are really really hungry so it's not unheard of but it's not their classic food so in those cases, the Bryce of Paskin's Nezik Shalem. If it's something that it eats sometimes when it's really hungry, even if it eats it and it's not super hungry, it still counts as normal. So on that, if Papa asks if anything like that, which is not unheard of, but not standard, you still have Nezik Shalem for. So if a cat eats dates or a the donkey eats fish, that counts as well, and you pay Nezik Shalem. I asked the question, there was an incident that happened where a donkey ate bread and then it chewed up the basket. And Rabbi Hida was Mechaev at Nezik Shalim for the bread, because that counts as something it could eat all the Yitchak. And on the basket, only Chatzi and Nezik. So the question is why? It's pretty standard. Once it's eating the bread, it's going to destroy the basket along the way. So the Gemara answers, it ate the bread and then later it chewed up the basket. It wasn't in the same thing. So Mar asks, does bread count as being normal? We have a contradiction to that. If a rice that says anything, if it eats bread and meat or soup, then it only pays half Nezik for it. So why tell me bread is normal? So the Gemara is assuming that this was a behemoth. The Gemara answers, no, it's a chaya. And a chaya doesn't eat bread. So the Gemara says, if it's a chaya, why does it say that the meat is not normal? Chayas most definitely eat meat. The Gemara answers, three answers. Either it was roasted meat, which they don't eat, or it was a chaya, but not a carnivorous chaya, it was an herbivorous chaya, like a deer that eats bread but it doesn't eat meat, or the third answer is that it's talking about a behemoth, not a chaya but what happened was that it went to the table and ate from the table which is not normal um, even to eat bread